Hey guys, John Haddock here with Think Comics, and one of the things at Think Comics that we really, really strive, we strive to talk about is, you know, hey, if you like the movies, if you're a fan of the culture of comic books and the characters, definitely get, in, get into reading comics, and one of the things we always come across even with Fisher is, hey, he hasn't read a whole lot of comic book comic books, and he really wants to, and I'm going to talk about uh, two things today that I really think, if you're new to comics, you should definitely check out. Now notice I'm going to be showing off the omnibus forms, you can also collect these in trades or the epic collections that that Marvel has um, it's whatever whatever is within your budget uh, definitely if you like Daredevil he just he, his uh, Netflix show finished up season three it got canceled by Disney it happens but a lot of people became Daredevil fans because of that show and if you love Daredevil as much as I do this is the this is where you want to start reading him and that's going to be Daredevil by Frank Miller and Klaus Jansen and in this you have um, Frank Miller does what he does with Batman but he does this before Batman he takes Daredevil, who's kind of a, a, a hokey go lucky character prior, and says, Look, Daredevil is serious. He's a blind ninja. He fights street level villains. He needs to be street level and grounded. And he does that. And he does it a great job. During his run, we see him introduce Electra, Stick, his mentor, and the Evil Hand Ninja Clan, which ends up being a troublesome for Daredevil for several issues to come. And we see a lot of points with Daredevil that really don't, that, that we wouldn't see anywhere else. And that really impact him on his life to come and definitely changes how comics can be taken. Um, this is one of the first pieces to really sit there and say, hey, look, comics are a serious medium. They can, they're not just something that a kid would read. They're something that anybody can read and really take something from them. One of the biggest things that he does in this book is, you know, he portrays violence in, in a violent way. I mean, before, you know, you'd see Spider-Man or any of the other Marvel characters. They use whatever special abilities that they see, and there's no backlash because of it, or there's no... You know, there's no implications that, oh, hey, that hurt. Like, you know, Iron Man would repulse or somebody and they fall down and they, you know, that everybody's cool. Here we see, you know, blood. We see people getting stabbed. Um, Bullseye is actually hanging Black Widow by a, an extension cord from a, 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 um, a blow dryer. So th that's very, very graphic violence uh, for the time. I mean, nowadays, if you pick up a comic, what I've named is nothing but... If you, if you can imagine, if you will, reading nothing but, you know, comics that were very, very kid-friendly and then to pick up a book of a character who wasn't treated as serious and say, wow, this is, a, this is a violent book, but it's violent in a way that it matters and it tells a story. It's not just senseless violence for the sake of being violent. It's for the sake to move the story and to say, hey, look, Daredevil it fights rough. Hey, Elektra is a ninja who uses blade weapons. They're going to, you know, they're going to have an outcome. You know, it's not like the animated series of X-Men in the 90s where Wolverine has adamantium claws, but he never uses them on anybody except a robot or an inanimate object because it's for, for TV for kids. Um, another thing to point out when you're reading this is to soak in and just understand that, hey, look, these characters, the world that they live in is, is alive and just as much as they are. Um, you'll see that just just with some of these panels that he does with the art like here's nothing here's here's two pages of, of action we see Electra fighting uh, ninja ninjas from the hand we see Daredevil fighting them up top and then as it, it just goes on and on and here she is stabbing a guy straight through his chest you know this is something that especially with Marvel we didn't really see and granted the blood is blacked out but you can see it dripping but we all know what it is you know nowadays they would show that in in all its glory and we we wouldn't be able to say you know wow this is crazy we just expect it today so this is very very groundbreaking for the time and something that you know if you're a fan you should you should definitely check out i mean here we see the guy he's still living and he's still moving on with a sword in his chest you know this is you know cutting edge stuff for the 80s um it's also noted that um, this also sets up a huge, huge, um, huge run with Daredevil. I mean, we see the death of Electra, which really uh, hinders him the rest of his life. And it goes on to other deaths that he encounters as well. Um, if you want to pick this up, the Daredevil, Frank Miller, Claus Jansen uh, omnibus, this will run you retail at 125 As of right now, I don't know if this is out of print. Um, if it is out of print, usually these books go up. Um, the sky's the limit. It's really what you're willing to pay. If you don't want to get them in this form, that's cool. Uh, Frank Miller has actually have he has them published in three volumes. They're usually anywhere from 19 to 24 dollars. But being that they're paperback, 
and they've been out for a while, prices on those probably went down. The best place to go would be eBay and just scour and find the best place for them. Another one of my favorite, favorite runs of all time and definitely something that really put comics on the map. If you're just now getting into comics, you need to read. This is Fantastic Four, 1963 by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. The king of comics, Stan Lee and all his glory of writing and everything. Um, these guys kill it. In this, in this, you're going to see the first appearance of Doctor Doom. You're going to see the first appearance of Mole Man. First appearance of, who else we got here? The Hate Monger. Um, who else? Uh, they deal with Namor, the Submariner a lot. You know, before this, Namor was, was a big character. Um, before Marvel took him over, he had his own line, him and, him and uh, Captain America. I believe they were with something called Atlas Comics, which what uh, Marvel ended up becoming in the 60s. Um, definitely, you need to look this, in, look this up. Um, Jack Kirby's art in this is fantastic. I mean, yeah, for the times, it's definitely a little outdated. It's got that classic feel to it. You know, one of the things with, with, with Kirby's art is whenever you get to a scene of like a laboratory or somebody's lair, I'm going to see if I can find one here. Everything looks like it belongs and it's, and it's a working, you know, piece. I mean, here we have a city, you know, everything, it, it has its own place. A lot of times whenever guys are drawing or, or illustrating a lair or a, um, a, a a dungeon or whatever they beef it up and they try to make it as 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 ridiculous as they can and it doesn't fit the source material or it doesn't fit fit what what makes sense like why is there you know a starfish or why is there a skeleton on the wall it doesn't it doesn't make sense but with what he does everything has its own working piece you know with the submariner's base you know you see like everything's a coral reef design inside and it and it, it, it yeah it sounds hokey but for the times and what for comics we're allowed to do they really pushed it and really said, hey, look, we're going to do this. The only downside to reading books like this is everything from the 60s is kind of hokey and it's very, very wordy. I mean, when you look at these panels, I mean, good Lord, there's a lot of written words and it's very, very wordy and very, very explanative. Um, you'll definitely get even segments, especially in these Fantastic Four issues, where they explain everything. I mean... They go into detail on every single thing, and it can be tiresome, even for a diehard fan like me. There's even segments where you'll see nothing but the Baxter building, and it will detail, you know, um, I'm actually trying to find that, um, where they'll show you, hey, how everything works. Everything has its own place in this fantastic world, and they break down every single one of their trinkets, one of their toys, a gadget that Mr. Fantastic used. They break it down so that everybody's on the same page, which can be quite tiresome after a while. Um, one of the great things that I think the omnibus form does better than the, um, I guess the the, tra the traditional like an epics collection or a masterworks or you know one of the other collected items is that these books also entail um, the newsletters, especially in the older ones where fans would write in. It's really interesting to see. You know what the uh, mindset was of a of a Marvel fan in the in the early '60s, and just you know see where they're coming from. I mean, what 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 really struck what really uh, striked me was in a lot of these newsletters, they bring up the fact that you know Sue Storm isn't somebody that is used pretty well. She's usually the the victim. She gets kidnapped in the. Uh, the Human Torch, Mr. Fantastic, and the thing you have to go save her. And one of the things that you always, always end up seeing is, um, hey, hey guys, well, um, so and so from wherever, why isn't Sue Storm being used more, or why is it, you know, this? We'd like to see more of her. So it's kind of even, even back then, we kind of had a push for for this women's movement that we see today, even in comic books. Now back to what what I was saying before is. Here we have an issue on how it describes everything that Mr. Fantastic does, and these are filled throughout all the issues. Um, and then here's a newsletter that we that we have that's actually included at the end of each issue, and it's just you know the fans writing in asking you know dear Stan and Jack, you know, and then they show their opinions on it. Um, let me see if I can just read one of these that um, is kind of cool. Here we go. Here we go. Dear Stan and Jack, I'm puzzled. When my parents were reading Fantastic 411, they came to a pinup of some manner and declared that Prince Namor was in the comics before the Fantastic Four. Perhaps you know something about this, and if you do, please give me the lowdown. And then here's their answer. 
They're right, Bill. Years ago in the golden age of comics, we had one of our biggest stars. He was one of our biggest stars, and judging by the tremendous response we had in his appearance, he may be again. So there they're even showing that, like, hey, he was popular, as I was saying before, with Atlas Comics, and he carried him, he carried over. And then they also have neat, you know, different ads like Don't Miss Strange Tales, 110 July on sale beginning April. You know, have you seen Ant Man's beautiful new partner the partner the Wasp? The tales do astonish. We hear that Sue Storm is just getting a mite jealous. Next issue of FF features Doctor Doom and a super thrilling different twist. The thing has an important part to play in it. And then just you know, thank you. So these were these on these for these uh, Silver Age books are just really really cool because these are just they play to the fan. They play to you know it's just for the fans. Hey, look, reread these stories. Yeah, they may not be the greatest story, but they're just nostalgic. And what they were able to accomplish during a time when comics were just laughed at, you know, is really really cool. And the fact that they that they took the time to include our, every single thing for fan service is definitely something um, that you need to take take advantage of. And if you do get a chance to read these, really take the time and read these um, read these letters because they're really really interesting and they're really really fun. And you know, definitely do it. Um, I mean, that wraps up these two issues books to start with. Um, as always, you know, this is John Haddock from Think Comics. Support your local comic shop. If you like these characters, please go out, you know, read on them, get in, get more involved because it really pays off if you do see these movies or these cartoon animated series. You know, you kind of know a little more behind the scenes or you might see it. They might introduce a character. And, you know, when your friends are like, oh, who's that guy? You can be like, oh, that's him. And he deals with this and this. And then when the movie does differently, you can say, oh, hey. If you didn't like how they did that, you can go back to Fantastic Four and see, you know, his first appearance. You know, even though, you know, Doctor Doom's first appearance in this book is he kidnaps the Fantastic Four, sends them back in time to steal Blackbeard's treasure, which is hilarious, in fact. But that was the that was a Doctor Doom story and that was a Doctor Doom plot line. But hey, thanks again, guys. Please like and subscribe and follow us. We also have a podcast on SoundCloud. Um, I'll be sending a link for that below. And thanks, guys. Continue reading comics.